All right, I think we're gonna get started. Um, I am going to be showing two things today. So we're doing a instant pot veggie tofu quinoa and then a chicken saute with peanut sauce. So both things are pretty easy but different. Just thought I'd try something new. Um, and people had suggestions, specifically Mike. No, just kidding. Um, but it's nice to see everybody. Thanks for coming back and joining us with this. Um, I hope everybody's been able to stay safe, stay indoors, hope everything's going well at home, um, and I hope you're cooking a lot more. I know it's hard to find a lot of things, but um, surprisingly, things are getting a little bit easier. But um, as we all know, meat might be short in short supply soon, um, and so I thought I'd try to show something that's vegetarian, almost actually it's vegan, and so if you want to try this out, it's something that um, a lot of people who have instant pots really like making. Um, it's quinoa. I just want to talk about quinoa really quickly. So I have white quinoa here. Um, white quinoa is a lot less earthy than say the tricolor quinoa is. Tricolor quinoa can be a little bit rough for some people to eat right away. It is healthier just because of those extra colors though but not enough where if you're afraid of eating quinoa, you should buy it or you shouldn't. Um, this is the white stuff. The main problem that people have when they buy quinoa is they forget to rinse it. It's like rice. There's starch that stays on it and it has kind of a bitter taste. And so if you don't wash it well, it'll go into your food and then it tastes weird. It also picks up a lot of cool flavors. And so you can make this in any way. I just did an Asian one just because I wanted to add turmeric. Like I try to add turmeric into everything. And so what I did was I, there's a recipe where we're gonna add turmeric into it. So I washed it and I drained it really well. If you have a little bit of residual water in here, um, just kind of calculate that into the proportions that we're gonna do. I'm gonna be showing this in an instant pot. If you're doing this at home on your stove, double the water. The Instant Pot, because it's airtight and we're doing it under pressure, it doesn't need that extra liquid. There's also some people who like a creamier quinoa, then go for it, add a little bit more water. I like the fluffy stuff where the grains are all separate so I can actually add it into salads and things like that. So for the amount of quinoa, I'm doing a one-to-one -one proportion. So it's one part quinoa, one part water. And then the in other ingredients that I have here are onions, um, garlic, our cilantro is for later on, and I'll tell you what I'm doing with that. That's for garnish. But I've got carrots, onion, um, a little bit of garlic, and then cauliflower, bell pepper, and ginger. So I'm just going to show you. Oh, I didn't grab my microplane. But for the ginger, what you're going to do is you're going to peel it with a spoon. So you can actually go in and peel so that way you're not wasting it. Keep it in a dark spot in your house. Um, and then you can use a microplane or a grater and take what you need. So we're gonna hold the blade and then cut the chunk that you need. We're only gonna do about one tablespoon. I'm gonna cut that in half again. And then if you have a little bit extra, you can use your spoon and go ahead and get it off. And then if you've got any soft spots, take them off too. Using the back of my knife, I'm gonna scrape everything aside. And then I'm gonna, just cause I don't have my grater on me right now, I'm actually just gonna dice it. But if you can grate it, um, I'm gonna do as much of a mince as I can out of this. And if you don't have any fresh ginger, don't worry, use uh, dry ginger. You can just use a little bit of ginger in there cause you're gonna notice we're gonna add a lot of different spices into here. The theme today is very curry-like. I like doing a lot of curries. And to tell you the truth, a curry is just a mixture of spices. So it can be anything. Make Indian curry, Japanese curry, uh, Thai curry, really anything. So I'm gonna save half of this for a recipe that we have later, and I'm gonna use about half of that for what we're gonna do right now, and that's our quinoa. So I'm gonna bring the Instant Pot over. Um, for people who don't have one, it's one of the best things that I probably, oh, I feel like, um, I love it. So I'm gonna actually turn it around. Well, actually I can't, then I can't see. But I'm just gonna turn it on and there's a saute function. So I'm gonna saute hot. So I'm gonna add a little bit of oil in the bottom of it. 
and then I'm gonna show you what spices I'm gonna add. I have coriander, cumin, and turmeric. So you're gonna add all three of those. That's actually the base of most, um, most curries. And then I've got my onions and garlic that I'm gonna also add in there. And then I also have my carrots that I'm gonna add in here right now too, just so that it can get softened up a little bit. And I'm not gonna add anything else because I'm gonna show you what we're gonna add that's a little bit diff uh, to make it kind of heartier. We're gonna add a bell pepper and tofu. Your recipe called for two bell peppers. If you have small bell peppers, add two. If you have large ones like this, go ahead and just add one. You don't need two. I'm gonna move this cutting board. Grab another one. And I'm gonna show you how to cut a bell pepper because bell peppers are a little bit, you don't wanna waste them and they can get kind of pricey. The other thing I wanted to show you is that you can actually peel a bell pepper. We had a Italian chef in here recently and he wanted bell peppers peeled, but not roasted. And I had never heard of this before. But what you do is you actually just take a peeler and you can peel the outside of it, just like that. It actually comes right off. So you can go ahead and peel it. And then you've got this soft, sweet inside. The skin can sometimes be a little bit tough and rough. And so then what they do for pepper nata, they'll peel this and it creates this sweet, sweet bell pepper without the peel. But if you want, go ahead and roast it to peel it. We're not doing any of those. It's just something I wanted to show you. So for the bell pepper, so that we don't have any waste, we're just gonna cut through the middle of it. So I'm gonna hold my blade, put my fingers around and then cut right through the middle. Okay. Just like that. And then I'm gonna take the seeds out. Different people will have different ways of doing this. This is just the way that I do it. Um, I find that it has the least amount of waste, but up to you what you will do. And then you've got all these ribs that have the white pith. You can go ahead and take that out with your knife. Now, I'm gonna dice this. So if you notice, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut on the inside of the bell pepper, not the outside. The outside is slippery. So if I cut on the inside, I have less of a chance of cutting my fingers. And then at the ends, I'm just gonna trim them off a little bit so that I can go back in and dice it. So I'm gonna gather it all together and push forward, keeping a claw for my other hand. So that's it. And you can use any color bell pepper that you want. You can use green, orange, yellow, really anything. And so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do it again on this side. And if you can buy organic peppers, go ahead. One of the ways that I find that I can keep peppers around longer and I can add them into more food is if I buy the mini bell peppers. So if you have those mini bell peppers, about three of them should be good. I'm gonna bring my Instant Pot back over. And so if you look, it's just all in there sauteing together. I'm gonna to use a spoon, and just kind of mix it on up. And then I'm gonna add my bell peppers in. And I'm actually also going to add cauliflower. You can add cauliflower or um, broccoli, whichever one you want. This is a veggie kind of mix. And so whatever you have lying around, you could even use frozen veggies. So if you have frozen veggies, go ahead and do frozen veggies. Again, what you have will be good. And then I've got cauliflower. I'm gonna add that in. Now I'm gonna push that back and I'm gonna show you. I'm using firm tofu today. Um, it's just easier to use for something that needs to be sauteed. So this is a 14 ounce pack. I only need about 12 ounces, so I'm gonna take a little bit off. What do you do with this extra tofu that you're not gonna use right now? You can freeze it or you can keep it in your refrigerator, but if you keep it in your refrigerator, store it in a bag of water. So it needs a little bit of water. If it doesn't have, if it doesn't have any water, it starts getting slimy on you. So what you can do is dice it and then freeze it. And then when you freeze it, what actually happens is it becomes these almost little sponges. If you make a soup, you can add it in there and it's a tofu that almost absorbs all that stock or liquid that you're using. So for tofu, you just need to 
push down with your blade, that's it. Let your knife do the work for you. You don't need to do the work for the, your knife. So I'm gonna cut this into little pieces. And you can even marinate this. And the marinade that we're making for our chicken saute would be perfect for this. So I'm gonna give this one more good mix and then I'm gonna add my quinoa. I'm gonna add my quinoa in there and stir it around. It looks like this. And if you don't have an instant pot, it also um, uh, steams really well too. So if you're a big gun steaming, you can even steam everything. I'm using this in the way of pressure cooking. So I'm pressure cooking my quinoa and veggie. And so I'm gonna add a little bit of soy sauce for the salt. And then I'm gonna add my water trying to go around and making sure that I get any piece of quinoa that might have accumulated on the side, just like that. And that's just gonna sit. So the, when you read an Instant Pot recipe, sometimes they seem like, wow, it only takes 10 minutes to cook. Uh, it's a little bit of a lie at that point. Because what it is is the liquid inside needs to come up to a boil and then it's considered 10 minutes or so on. We're actually only gonna do this for three minutes. So I'm gonna keep it on a high pressure cook. So I'm gonna pressure cook on high for three minutes. And then I'm gonna take off the, um, I'm gonna let it come down to temperature on its own. So I'm closing the vent to make sure that the steam can stay inside. And this thing's gonna come up. If you're short on time, what I do when I'm using an Instant Pot to cook is I always have a kettle of boiling water. That way I can pour the hot water into the Instant Pot right away and it'll shorten the amount of time it takes for this whole thing to come back up to a boil. Okay, so the last, so I'm gonna let that sit and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with, oh, I forgot to add the tofu. See, this is what happens when nobody's watching me cook. <laughs> I'm gonna add the tofu too. So add your tofu right on top because you're gonna mix everything up in a little bit anyways. All right. So now it looks like that. So I've got the tofu and all the veggies in there with the liquid. And you can use chicken stock, veggie stock. I just have water right now, but really up to you what you want to add. And then you've got your cilantro. So I'm lucky and I live in an area with a lot of nice fresh herbs. And so I can find it. But what I, I, I've been realizing that I'm buying more than I need. So what you can do when you get your fresh herbs home put them in a glass of water just like this, and then every once in a while, trim the stems. So go back in and trim it. You also don't want any leaves to really touch the water. The reason being, it'll muddy up the water and kind of make it gross. The other thing you can try, um, if you feel like your herbs still die, you might have a lot of bleach slash chlorine or whatever weird stuff going on in your tap water. So use filtered water. So you can use filtered water or, um, I use water that comes out of the refrigerator, so it's a little bit more filtered, I guess. Um, but you can then store this in your refrigerator or keep it out. If you have fresh basil, what you do is you find the node or where the leaves are growing from, pull off all the leaves and cut right under there, and then you put it in water until it starts to actually grow. Um, it starts to grow. So you'll notice it, and then you can plant it. I'm gonna let that cook for four minutes. So it has to come up to a boil and then it's gonna cook for four minutes and then I'm gonna let it finish steaming inside. If we have time, I will be able to show you. But we're gonna make a um, chicken saute now. This was Mike's request. And if you don't know, chicken saute is actually from Indonesia. So um, it just means grilled meat. And there's a couple of countries that do it. So there's a Thai versions, there's Indonesian versions, but the original place that it came from was Indonesia. So if you are interested, we're going, actually we're gonna marinate first. So I've got chicken. Um, you can, I found chicken that was diced already, so you can use that. Chicken thigh does taste better though. So if you've got chicken thigh to use, that would be better. And then I've got a whole mixture of spices. This dish is so easy that you can completely eliminate this and all you need is this. So if you can see, it's like a soy sauce that's really thick. And it's called ketchup 
Manis. I can't say that right. I'm sure I'm butchering it. It does sound like ketchup though, but it's K-E-C-A-P and it's Indonesian. It's a soy sauce that they've added sugar to. So if you think about it, you can do this at home if you can't find it around. Um, all it is is sugar. It's equal parts of soy sauce and sugar cooked together until it gets syrupy. So it's almost like a syrup that you're making. And then you can add different things into this and flavor it in different ways. So some people will add chili, some people will add garlic. Um, so you can make variations of this and to make it even, and to have give it another note, you can also add a little bit of molasses. So if you did one cup of soy sauce, you would use one cup of brown sugar, preferably. If you have white sugar, it's fine too. And then about one tablespoon of molasses. And you're gonna cook it until it gets really thick so that it's like a syrup when you come up. And the way to tell that is when you're boiling it on the stove, it'll get really, really bubbly. It'll look crazy. That's when you know you're almost there. That means the sugars are breaking down and it's become, it's caramelizing and that's exactly what you wanna do. So I took this up a notch obviously because I can't seem to just cook normal food. And I'm adding turmeric, coriander, uh, nutmeg. Nutmeg is what I'm adding that's a little bit different and more sugar. So this dish actually has a lot of sugar. A lot of people don't realize that Thai food and a lot of Filipino food actually, a lot of Southeast Asian food uses sugar um, because they're always trying to balance the flavor. So there's citrus, salt, and um, sugar. And so you actually find a lot of sugar in everything. So I'm gonna add that in here. Oops. And I'm gonna mix that up. And I add turmeric too. And then this is what you would marinate your chicken in. So it's pretty thick. And so if you wanted, you can add a little bit of oil in here. So that's what I usually do with marinades. I'll add a squirt of oil, just like that. And just to warn you, if you are using turmeric or turmeric in your food, it stains everything. It really, really, really does. And so just be careful when you're using it. So I've got these little diced up chicken cubes that I'm gonna add in here. And I'm gonna mix. So you can, about two pounds is what you need. Um, remember, this is seasoned now. And then what I'll do is I'll have some of that uh, soy sauce on the side, that thick soy sauce, and I'll baste the saute as I'm doing it. So some people will take big chunks of chicken and do it. I like doing it this way, just, I like small chunks of chicken. Um, and if you don't have a grill, don't worry, I have substitutes for you. I'm using a stovetop grill today, and you can also use um, your broiler. So if you do this in your broiler, just get it, get, put your broiler on, line a baking sheet with a little bit of foil, make your skewers, and you can broil it. So I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit before I skewer it. And then I'm gonna make my, the most important part of this, which is the peanut sauce. So you can use regular peanut butter or you can use chunky peanut butter, depends on what you like. And then I've got more sugar, some of that thick soy sauce and coriander and cumin, hold on. So that all gets added in. And then some garlic chili pow uh, garlic chili sauce, as well as some coriander. So here's the coriander. The other one was cumin. I'm gonna mix that up. And it's gonna be pretty thick, just like this. So some people like it this way, and you might like it this way. I don't, I like it a little bit thinner. So what I do is I'll add water, so I have water here. And then you can add lime juice too. I left my lime in the car, sorry. But lime would be really good too. Cause then it'll give it that extra kind of flavor. If you wanted to warm this up, you can. So you can warm this up on your stove um, or you can just put it in the microwave to warm it up. But it really depends on if you want a dipping sauce or if you want a sauce that you can just uh, eat almost with your chicken. So when we're talking about marinating meats, um, we want to be careful. 
if you've got something with citrus, which we don't today, but if you did add citrus in it, I would say maybe two hours at most, not more than two hours. Um, if we're doing what we're doing today where it's just soy sauce, you can probably go overnight, but you need to make sure that you keep it in a cool part of your refrigerator. What happens when you marinate meat is as it gets closer to room temperature, it absorbs the flavors more. So if you're in a rush, you can probably do this in 20, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and you'll get pretty good flavor out of it, especially if your chicken pieces are really small. So depending on which one you're doing, um, depending on how you're, what kind of meat size cut you've got and how you want this to taste, it'll have different effects. And so that's all for that. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna skewer it. So skewers. Um, this is my grill today. So this is a lodge grill and you can get it on Amazon for under $20 from what I can remember and lodge is amazing. So if you've never bought, bought lodge products, um, they're really, really good. Sorry, I just had to turn off the light. All right, so I'm gonna turn this on and the goal for this is to get it as hot as possible. So you want it to get it to the highest temperature, almost smoking. Um, what you're seeing, you see a little smoke coming up. It's from the Instant Pot, sorry. So I'm gonna wait until this gets nice and hot. Yep, that's it. Hold on. That's it, all right? And then I'm gonna skewer this. Hold on, sorry. There we go. All right. Skewers, you do or you don't need to soak in water. It's debatable. If you're doing this on the stove, um, I would say you don't need to soak it. We've found out over the years, no matter how much you soak these skewers, they don't seem to work. And so I'm actually gonna put this on the stove, so I'm gonna move you back a little bit. It's not working right now. Um, so, Scooch you over so that you can see the stove right there. Perfect. So I'm gonna turn this on nice and high. <clears throat> if you're doing this on the grill, what I would suggest is wrap the outside of your um, sticks with a little bit of foil. Soaking it in water will prevent it from burning in about two minutes as opposed to like one minute. So it, it really doesn't do that much. Um, I find if you're doing it in the broiler, what you can do is you can line them all up. You don't need to soak it and then cover the exposed part of the uh, uh, sticks with foil. So you're just covering it to prevent it from burning. I found that most of the time soaking it doesn't really do much. Or the other thing you can do is you can use metal skewers. I like metal skewers and you can find a lot of them at uh, Persian markets. So the ones that they use for the kebabs. This isn't hot, sorry if it's scaring you that I'm doing this. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna grab chicken and I'm gonna skewer it together just like that. So the smaller your, the pieces of your chicken are, the easier it'll be to cook through. But you want them all about the same size so that you don't burn some and not cook some. And I'm using chicken breast today so it'll cook a lot faster. Um, but I will admit thighs taste a lot better and you can trim your thighs pretty well these days that it will give you better flavor and It just ends up tasting a little bit. There you go um, That sweet soy sauce that I'm talking about you can there's actually a Thai brand that you can buy too So Thai in Thai cuisine. There's a lot. It's in a lot like <clears throat> Paki Mao or Patsy Yu. That's what they're using as their soy sauce actually but again, you can make it on your own. I'm gonna do two skewers just like this. My stove gets hot pretty quickly. I'm gonna do three, four, do one more. And again, there's turmeric in here, so your hands will get stained, your fingernails, everything, but it's healthy, it's good for you. So that's it, all right. And then if you want, add a little bit of oil. I'm just letting it drip off. It might've looked like a lot, but it's not. And then I'm gonna lay them in.
and that's it. So you can um, do, you can also do this with pork. Um, shrimp would also be really good. Or really any kind of protein. This marinade, like I said, would work really well with tofu too. Tofu, I wouldn't necessarily put on the grill like this. I would rather put it in the oven and that way it, you have more control over it. I'm gonna do one more, just like that. So this is the bottle of sweet soy sauce that I use. So it looks like that. And this one's a Thai one, but you can buy um, definitely Indonesian ones. <clears throat> good to go. So you just want a couple of minutes on each side. I probably don't want to, can't do that with my fingers that much longer. Sorry. I lost the touch. Tongs would definitely be better. So you're going to let that cook. <clears throat> if you feel like it's burning before you're finishing cooking it, don't worry. Take it out and finish it off in your oven instead. <clears throat> so I'm going to let that go for a little bit more. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to chop this cilantro. So for the cilantro, we're going to give it a haircut. And you can use the cilantro for everything that we're cooking today. So we're going to use it for, um, we're going to use it for the quinoa. But if you wanted, you could even use it for this. So you've got a lot. Don't throw away the stems. Go online and find it. If you want, I can even send it to you. My email address is on our website. There's great um, green curry recipes that use the stems. The stems are where you're gonna get most of your flavors. So if you like making chimichurri or um, anything of that sort, you can make a really good sauce just by saving the stems. All right. So we're gonna give it a haircut. And what that means is I'm gonna hold my blade so pinch your blade and then put your fingers around it. And then I'm going to hold my cilantro in the other hand. The same thing you can do, you can do the same thing with parsley. Your knife is going to be able to take off the big leaves off of it. So you can just go around it and go like that. And I don't need that much. So I'm going to actually leave all of this and put it right back in here. And then I'm going to gather it all up. And then I'm going to dice. I'm gonna go back and forth and dice. That's it. So go back around and dice. And then that's your garnish that you're gonna to add to all your dishes. <clears throat> and again, you can do this with parsley, cilantro, anything of that sort. Um, if you notice that it bruises easily, it just means that your knife isn't sharp, which mine isn't right now. I chose the wrong knife. So I'm going to keep doing this. <clears throat> and that's it. I'm going to cook this just like that. Any questions so far? I did add oil, sorry. So for the marinade, I did add a little bit of oil. So I added enough oil to make it almost like a paste or easier to use. Paul, Paul, uh, Paul from downstairs is coming in to say hi right now. So I'm sorry, somebody just opened the door while I'm doing a live cooking class. <laughs> so I'm going, this is almost done. I'm just gonna wait a couple more minutes. If you heard just now our Instant Pot just went off. So normally I would wait about 10 minutes before I opened it again, but because we're short on time, I'm gonna show you how you open an Instant Pot correctly and what it kind of looks like, again, knowing that you would have a little bit more time to go. So, so you see a little bit of a squirt. I'm gonna go in and I'll use something, whether it, it can be a wooden spoon, this is probably the safest way of doing it. You're gonna use a wooden spoon and let it 
go out. Unless anybody that you know that's struggling cooking at home, this is all they need. They don't even need a knife. They just need an instant pot. I'm gonna let that go. So all that pressurized steam can come out. And so this is where you need to be careful. Um, you don't want your face right into it. Um, you want to stay away a little bit to make sure you don't hurt yourself. And then there's a little knob on the pot, on the top, that means that the pressure is going up, I guess. Um, it's pressurized completely. That's what you're waiting to go down. So some people will cheat and they'll actually take like a, they'll take something and push that down too to help it go faster. Again, you don't want to do this for this dish specifically. You want that extra pressure to make sure that the quinoa cooks through. And so then I'm going to open it. And then you'll notice it looks like that. And all nice and dry, almost. So then you're going to take your fork or your spoon. You're going to toss it around a little bit. And the way that you tell that quinoa is cooked through is you want to pick up a grain and you wanna look at the grain. It shouldn't have much white on the outside of it. It should be almost clear. And so there's that. And so if you did what I did and there's a little bit of extra liquid on the bottom, all you can, what you can do is you can press saute and it'll cook all the way out. But like I said, if you're doing this at home, let the pressure come down on its own at least 10 minutes and then your quinoa is perfectly cooked and each one is separated and separated nice and well. So let me plate this up for you. So, again, taste and season as you need. I'm gonna put the quinoa in a bowl, just like that, with the tofu. You can use chicken too. So use what, you're, what you have at home, use what you're comfortable with. Um, time shouldn't matter that much, but there's enough pressure and steam going on in there. So there's that, and I'm gonna garnish it with a little bit of cilantro, just like that. So there's one dish. And then we've got our chicken saute ready to go too. And so with that, I'm just gonna pick it up. I'm gonna put them on the plate. And then I'm gonna do a little bowl of sauce. Sorry, I know you're looking at my back, sorry. <laughs> and I'm gonna put it right there on the side, just like that. And then again, garnish with a little bit of extra cilantro if you want, and you've got chicken saute ready to go too. Freeze as well. All right, um, let's see, some questions. If you get an Instant Pot rice cooker or, ooh, that's a great question, rice cooker or Instant Pot? Instant pot, sorry. I use I use both every night. My husband says, can we just leave them out all the time? But um, yeah, if I had to, because with the instant pot, and I will, once one of these weeks, I'll show you, with the instant pot, you can actually create layers. So you can actually cook rice on the bottom, and then they it comes with a steamer. You put the steamer rack, sorry, a steaming rack on top of it, and you can almost cook another dish on top. So they're great, great um, Indian recipes, whether it be dal or curries or whatever, where the bottom of the pot is cooking rice and the top of the pot is cooking the sauce for you. So it's all done in one pot. The other reason why I say the instant pot before a rice cooker is summer's coming around. And when it gets hot, the last thing you wanna do is turn on your stove. You can cook everything in this instant pot and there is, it, everything works just as well. So um, again, I would suggest the Instant Pot. I'd pro I'd pro I have three at home. Um, and so I definitely say it's worth it um, if you don't have one. And yes, the original Instant Pot is the way to go. Don't try to buy any of the off-brand ones. All right, thank you guys for joining and thank you for letting me go over a little bit. Uh, next week, I will come up with something, but it'll be posted today. So um, send us ideas. Again, my email address is online. If you wanna see anything, please shoot me an email and I will respond as quickly as I can. But I've also been doing recipes for the med center. So 